Welcome to my video about road shapes on OpenDrive. My name is Nico and in this video I will explain how the road shapes work in OpenDrive, what elements it is represented by and as usual we will have a look in the overall XML structure where you can find the shape elements that represent the road shape. You will have a look at the concepts that apply to shape entries and we will also have a look at some simple examples to help you apply the shape elements and road shapes in your everyday work. So let's get into it. So first of all we need to check out our high level XML structure. And here we can find the shape entry that represents our road shape within the lateral profile. If you're interested in all the other attributes you can see here, you can check out my video about what is OpenDrive and I will put a link in the video description. So, but now let's get into the lateral profile because that's got what's going to be interesting for today. Within the lateral profile, we will find our shape entry. And our shape entry is perpendicular to the s-axis and defines our road shape at a given s-coordinate. But we have a second part in our lateral profile that can be interesting and I will make a future video about. And that is the super elevation, which is a rotation of the whole road across um, the t-axis using the s-axis as a uh, rotation point and applies a rotation angle to our road. But for now we will stick to the shape element and so let's see how that is defined. So the shape element is defined by six attributes and that is the s-coordinate which defines at what, what s-position this shape is valid. Then we have the t-coordinate that tells us um, from what t-coordinate that shape is valid from. So in that case we have uh, t minus 4 and then we have the, the parameters a, b, c and d that are part of our well-known and loved third order polynom we have in OpenDrive. So for example if you want to apply a constant height to our shape then we can do so by uh, changing the parameter a in our third order polynom you can see up here. Um, and this is going to be the result. Obviously just having a constant height is not going to be enough so we can also apply a constant ascent or descent like in the example here where we change the parameter b. If, we, if you want to combine that with a offset with a height offset you can you know adapt parameter a and b and then it would look not like this but you know similar with a height offset. If we want to create a crossfall, like in the very first uh, picture you saw, then we can add a second shape to our shape definitions. And the interesting part here is that the second shape is also valid at the same S coordinate as the previous shape. But the difference here is that we have another T coordinate that tells us from where along the T axis this shape entry is valid from. And what we can see here that the first shape entry represents the yellow box and the second one represents uh, the purple box. And you can see that parameter B um, in the purple box is the direct opposite to the one in the yellow box and by that creating this crossfall here. Obviously we can uh, add as many shapes as we need for a road shape and here I've made this plateau in the purple box by applying a constant height to it um, and then added the uh, blue box to create a descent at the end. Obviously there's one problem with this kind of uh, linear changes in um, the road shape because there is not a smooth transitions between uh, each of the shape elements. And for that we have our third order polynom and we can do something like this. Obviously this is not perfect and you can run it through optimizations using those four parameters um, in that third order polynom but just to give you an example and an idea how it could look like, so this could be a um, more uh, likely crossfall. And as we now know how we can define a road shape at one S coordinate, let's see how do we get um, a second road shape in there and now the most important and, and interesting part is how do we calculate points in between those. So here I created a very very simple example where we have uh, the first uh, shape entry at a certain s-coordinate and we have a second shape entry at a s-coordinate further down the road. And what we now want to do is get to know the equation that helps us calculate that point in between those two shape entries. Obviously um, we need to figure out what interpolation OpenDrive provides us here and that is very simple, it's a linear interpolation. 
So the equations that we need now are provided by the standard itself. And we can uh, see that we get the equations of each of those shape entries here. Obviously, depending on how many shape uh, elements you find for that shape entry, um, you need to adapt that a bit, but it will look like this. And if you combine that to calculate the height of that selected point, this is going to be the equation. And you can find that in the OpenDrive standard itself in chapter 8.4.3 in uh, version 1.70. And this is it about road shapes. I hope that helped you and got you, give you a little bit of an insight. I want to say thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked that video. First time with me in the picture. So like uh, consider to like and subscribe for future videos. See you the next time.